Allah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa wala. The reason we were a bit late because of the turn up was a bit late. Yeah, the brothers did not turn up until 15 or started turning up at 15 past. Inshallah, next uh, two weeks' time, we would like them inshallah, to come at uh, exactly the time. Um, it, it was advertised by our brothers Zangir at 8 o'clock. It came at 8 o'clock, but uh, there's only about Ismail or another person, two people. So, inshallah, for the community in Ellsbury, we would like them inshallah, inshallah, to encourage one another at come at the time. So, we're going to make it quarter past eight since Maghrib is more than quarter past uh, nine. So it gives us an hour. Uh, and there's a very important topic. I mean, it's very everybody needs this topic. Very important, which is the oath. You do it every day. And then we come to the vows. But today we're going to continue with the oath. It's very important to know what is the oath that you need to be fulfilling? What is the oath that you don't have to bother about? What is the oath you need to expiate? How to expiate? Can you expiate before or after? I feel that this is a topic which touches our daily life. So without any delay, please, our young reciter, Ismail. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam, wa ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, amma ba'd. Today, on the 28th of Shawwal in the year 1442, corresponding to the 9th of June 2021, we are in the book Al Wajiz, the concise presentation of the fiqh in the chapter Oaths and Vows on page 522, the types of oaths. Oaths may be divided into three types, an unintentional oath, a false oath, and an enacted oath. An unintentional oath and its ruling. What is meant here by an unintentional oath is wherein a person swears, but he actually did not intend to make an oath. It is like when a person says to another, by Allah, you shall eat, or by Allah, you shall drink. While in reality, he does, not, he does not mean to be swearing an oath by such statements. Oaths of this nature are not to be enacted, and the one who has made this oath is not required to take any action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly said, لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما كسبت قلوبكم Allah will not call you to account for that which is unintentional in your oaths, but he will call you to account for that which your hearts have earned. And Allah has also said, لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما عقدتم الأيمان Allah will not punish you for what is unintentional in your oaths, but he will punish you for what is deliberate in your oaths. Aisha radiallahu anha said about the words, Allah will not call you to account for that which is unintentional in your oaths. They were revealed about a person saying, no, by Allah, or certainly by Allah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. As we have heard that the oaths are the three types. We can discuss in the first type, which is Yamin al Then we're going to talk about Al Yamin al Mungamisa or Al Ghamus, Yamin al Ghamus, and then Al Yamin al Munaqida. So the first one, Al Lagu. Al Lagu means it's not serious. Uh, we call it uh, idle speech. You're not really confirming it. And it's been taken from the verse, La yu akhidukum Allahu bil Lagwi fi Aymanikum, walaki yu akhidukum bima akatum al Ayman. So this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 89, it tells us that Allah Azza will not hold us on account for what we say from the oaths, which is lagu, we don't mean it. And this is common in my country, for example, if somebody is passing with his friend by his house, he say, come in, by Allah, come in. And he doesn't make, a, make an oath here. It's just that it's a word, he comes in his mouth. By Allah, come in. And here he says an example, by Allah, eat. Or a threat. So for example, you say, uh, let's say to, you, say to your son, if you don't do your homework, I'm going to break your legs. I don't, of course, you don't mean that. So if he did not do his homework, I don't think he's going to break his legs. And I don't think it's an oath. So by Allah, I'm going to break your legs. But by Allah, I'm going to shoot you. Of course, you're not going to shoot him. It's just you threaten him. So these are lagu. By Allah, I'm going to build a house on the moon. How can you build a house on the moon? That's beyond your imagination. So there is no sin 
for this and there is no kafara, there is no expiation because it's lagu. Also from the lagu is to make an oath on something which is, you have certainty about it. Okay. It's like uh, something which is, we call it like, um, yani, you, you believe in it and you're saying it just for more emphasis. So for example, you point into a masjid, you say, by Allah, by Allah, this is a masjid. This is not an oath. This is lagu. By Allah, this is a masjid. Of course it's a masjid. It's not a bar. Because you point into it and you see it. So by Allah, this is a masjid. By Allah, this is a fan. I've got a fan in front of me. By Allah, this is a fan. So I am not, this is called lagu. It's not really an oath. And this is what Zurara ibn Awfa, he said, the man who makes an oath on something that he sees it as it is. It Definitely it is. That's a lagu. Because it's just basically he's adding to the emphasis here of something that he knows it is true. That's called lagu. And that lagu, as I said, no sin and no kafara. Right. Now we come into the Yameen al-Ghamus. And by the way, the, the lagu is not for helping you to do something. Like, for example, you want to sell an item. You want to sell something and they make an oath that's different that we're going to come underneath this oath now coming uh, to us which is al yamin al ghamus what is the ruling of it fadl a false oath and its ruling it, is it called what the false oath the false oath no ghamus is not false it's not supposed to be <coughs> called false <coughs> because a false um, even if you lie, it's a false. But this one, ramus, means ramasa. It's the, the dipping of it dips you to the helper. So let's call it ramus. Al yamin al ramus. Better. Al yamin al ramus refers to the false oath by which rights are harmed or by which one intends evil and treachery. The false oath is known in Arabic as the ramus oath, which implies submerged. This is because the one who does it is first submerged in sin and then he will be submerged in the hellfire. So let's call it submerging oath. Go ahead. To make a false oath is one of the greatest of the great sins for which there is no expiation. As Allah has said, He will punish you for your deliberate oaths. This oath is not implemented as an implemented oath is one that can be resolved while there can be no righteousness involved in relation to a false oath. Okay. I don't think you understood that. It means this Yamin al-Ghamus, you didn't understand it's not because of the translation. It's because of you need explanation. The Yamin al-Ghamus is number one upon something which is in the past. Whereas the other one, Yamin al-Mun'aqid, is something on the future. That's going to be talking about the third type. So Yamin al-Ghamus is something in the past. It's number one. Number two, the Yamin al-Ghamus is that you're going to take, you're going to make, taking the right of somebody. So it is uh, devouring the rights or not fulfilling or taking away the rights of others. That's why it is called Shahada to Zur. Shahada to Zur. The testimony of falsehood, which is something in the past. And the Prophet of Allah, one day he was leaning and then he sat down. Suddenly he just said, it's like a revelation came to him. The false testimony, which is this one, Ramus, that is to go to the judge and make a testimony in which that you say this man is a criminal or this man is not a criminal, but he's a criminal. This man, he had taken such and such, but he did not. Or someone he did not, did not say such and such, but he did. So is it something on the past? So he said, Adalat, it is equalized just now. He's been given the revelation that the Yamil Ramus is equalizing a shirku billah, making shirk in Allah Azza wa Jal. In terms of sin-wise, not in terms of we'll take you outside the fold of Islam. So it's one of the major sins. And then he said, Allah and he said, uh, uh, Subhanallah, the verse just flew from my mouth now. And avoid a rich, rich mean filth of the awthan, idolatry. And, and also, 
Shahada to Zur, Qawla Zur, the false testimony. So these two were mentioned in one ayah. Because of that, Allah's Messenger, he just sat down, he said, now the testimony, false, false testimony, the Amin Ghamus is equalizing in terms of sin-wise to the shirk, to the idolatry worshipping. Now, so we said, number one, we said, what is the full condition? It is to be what? In the past. Number two, to devour or to take the world. Number three, it's a lie. So it's a lie. So if, you, if you've taken, if you made an oath in the past on somebody who did something which is truthful, that's not Yamil Ghamud. This is Shahadat al Haq for a testimony of truthfulness. So it's false testimony. So it has to be number one, we said. It's in the past. Number two, it's a lie. Number three, it is taking the right of somebody. Okay? So these are the things. So it's called Shahadat Zur. Also, it's called in Arabic, Yaminu Sabira. Yaminu Sabira has been mentioned in the hadith. Yaminu Sabira. That is, a, that is a, an oath which is waiting for taking, hala, uh, to, taking the right of others. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also, go Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا, ولا تَتَّخِذُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخَلًا بَيْنَكُمْ فَتَزِلَّ قَدَمٌ بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا وَتَذُوقُ السُّوءَ بِمَا صَدَتْتُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And make not your oaths a means of deception among yourselves, lest a foot may slip after being firmly planted. And you may have to taste the evil punishment in this world of having hindered men from the path of Allah and yours will be a great torment, i.e. the fire of hell in the hereafter. Al-Tabari stated, the meaning of this verse is that you are not to make your oaths by which you entered into a covenant with others, a means to deceive and commit betrayal, such that they, such that they feel safe with you while you have a hidden intent to betray them. Abdullah ibn Amr narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The great sins are associating partners with Allah, being disobedient to parents, killing a soul, and making a false oath. No, making yameen ghamus. Falsehood, it doesn't mean, because falsehood could be a lie. Yet and submerging, oh, so you call it yameen ghamus, please. And making yameen al ghamus. Right, so this is yameen al ghamus. It's got, we've got like one hadith left, inshallah, in a minute. So it's got three conditions. I repeat them again. First one is to be in the past, something in the past, not in the future, or something's happening now. Number two is a lie. Number three, it is taking the right of others, and it's called shahada to zur, zur, and it's called as well yamin on sabira. So we've got three names for it: submerging oath, and that implies if somebody said something, an oath regarding the past, and he's truthful, alhamdulillah, it's no problem. So they say he's not making a testimony in front of somebody. He said, by Allah, yesterday I went to London. Which I did. No problem. I'm truthful. By Allah, yesterday you took my pen. And you took my pen. No problem. But if I said, falsehood without devouring the rights of others, without taking the rights of others, like, by Allah... I went yesterday to Birmingham. I'm a liar. I didn't go to Birmingham. This is not a ramus. This is falsehood. This is what I'm just saying. It's called the uh, lying oath. Okay, this is not the ramus. What's the rule of it? It's a sin. But it's not like the other one. Okay? This is a major sin. So what is the sin of a person who is making an oath and lying in the past? It is a greater sin than the one who is lying without an oath. So if I said I went to Birmingham yesterday and I did not go as a liar, it's a sin. But if it's a by Allah, I did, I, did, I did go to Birmingham yesterday and I'm a liar. This is more of a sin than the one who says I, you know, he lied without an oath. So the one who lies in the past without devouring the wealth of others, without taking that of others, this is not ramus. Okay? So if he had made an oath... He will be more of a sinner than the one who lies just without a, an oath. But it's not a major sin. Major sin is the one to devour. Uh, no, it's, not, it's not a ramus. You, 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 I mean, it's not a ramus. So it's a lie. This is a lie. And a person, if he lies a lot, well, he will be written recorded, well, Allah is a liar. 
So the Ramus is the one in the past and a lie and also takes the rights of others. That's the Ramus. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and that is, Man Muslim. He who takes the right of another person with his oath, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had entailed for him the hellfire and deprived him from paradise. A man said to the Prophet of Allah, even if it is a little thing, he said, even if it is a siwak. By the way, this is a pencil. Even if it is a siwak. So if you took that siwak from somebody without a due right, you took it, confiscated it, you stole it or something. Even that it is. You made an oath. Yeah, Wallah, it is mine and it's not yours. Then, even if it's that, Allah, it's a major sin, it's a threat. So it's one of the great sins. Tayyip. Now we come to the following last hadith. Fadl. Abu Hurairah narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are five that have no acceptable expiation for them. Associating partners with Allah, killing a soul without due right, robbing a believer, fleeing on the day the armies meet, and swearing a solemn oath by which one takes wealth without due right. You call it solemn oath. Again, swearing solemn oath, what? And swearing a solemn oath by which one takes wealth without due right. Takes wealth without due right. You mean taking the, the due right of others. Uh, so that's why the oath of something. So he says here, there's no kafara, there's no expiation. And by the way, the author had said from the beginning, he said, there's no kafara, no expiation in it. Why he's taking it from this ayah, the ayah, only he will hold you onto what you have said as a, uh, an oath, which is the third type. Okay. And also in this hadith, it says here that the five things, which there's no kafara, is one of them in this. And by the way, this is one of two opinions. There are other opinions, like Imam Shafi, that there is an expiation. But the correct opinion, there is no expiation. And you say that means if there's no expiation, it's less sinful than the one who's got expiation? How can it be major sin then? No, it's the other way around. Because if something's got an expiation, it's less sinful in the eyes of Allah of something that got no expiation. I'll give you an example. A person who is, uh, for example, uh, let's say he made an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will go tomorrow to such and such place. And he changes his mind. And there is an expiation. But if a person, let's say, for example, he did not fast a day in Ramadan for no excuse, no expiation. You have to make tawbah to Allah, just like the Emil Ramus, you have to make tawbah to Allah. Emil Ramus is to write as well to fulfill the due right of that person you've taken it away from him. So if you've, if you've broken a fast during Ramadan without no legitimate reason, there's no way you're going to compensate that day if you, if you fast the whole entire remaining of your life. You've, that's it. You can't return back that time. So what you do, you're going to repent to Allah and increase involuntary. Maybe Allah will accept. There's no So when there is no expiation, the sin is larger in the sight of Allah. That's why one of those, so those things which I mentioned in these five, shirku billah, no expiation. Number two, killing a person without due right. Number three, Robbing the believer. Number four, to flee when the, the when the army advances. Let your people, you know, your, your friends and, and the army be killed because if you let them, you betray them, you're treacherous, you just left them. And then the fifth one, making this submerging oath, which is the Emil Ramus. There is no expiation. The correct opinion, as, as I said, from the two opinions, that there is no expiation for Al Yameen Al Ramus. No expiation for Al Yameen. Al Ramus. We have here two hadith, and I want to inshallah share with you. First one, hadith Abi Dhar. Prophet he said, Three people, Allah will not speak to them, and He will not look at them, and He will not purify them, and they will have severe punishment. Three people, and by the way, when He says three people, it doesn't mean just the only three. 
because there is an ayah that talks about a fourth one الذين يشترون بأيمانهم عهدا the ones who are purchased with their oath something a covenant which is not correct betrayal but here those three are being mentioned in the hadith to emphasize three Allah will not speak to them that means Allah speaks and he doesn't speak to them he's going to speak to the kuffar when Allah really says to the people in the hellfire ولا تكلمون don't talk to me so here it means the saying of the pleasure, the saying of being pleased. So Allah will not speak to them the saying of the one who is satisfied, but he will speak to those even criminals. Go disgracing you. Don't talk to me. So the speech of riba, the speech of pleasure, that's the one. Will not speak to them and he will not look at them. There is a general look and there is a look of the pleasure. He will, they will not have it. They will be deprived. Well, I will, they will not purify them. They have severe torment. And he mentioned that three times. He kept repeating it. So they've got what? Four things. Allah will not speak to them. Allah will not look at them. Allah will not purify them. And they will have severe torment. And he mentioned that three times. Abu Dhar, he said, Messenger of Allah, Khabu wa Khasiru, Man whom? Disgrace to these people. They are losers. Who are they? So they've been Prophet Allah emphasized three times. Uh, three times he said it. That those people, Allah will not look at them, they will not speak to them, Allah will not purify them. They have severe torment. Who are they messenger of Allah? They are losers, they lost it. Who are they messenger of Allah? He said, and this is the following one. Qala Prophet, he said, Al Musbil. Al Musbil. The one who lowers his garment. The one who lowers his garment out of pride. The one who lowers his garment without pride, he'll be in the far. He's less harmful, less torture than the one who's not. It's going to be not, Allah not going to speak to you. They're going to look at you. No mercy. Lower your garment below your ankles with pride. And manan. The one who gives you something and he start telling you and embarrassing you in front of everybody. What is what do you think of that thing I've given you? What do you think of that giving you? Don't you remember? You should really be grateful to me. I've given you that. And manan. Third one, al munfiqu silatahu bil halif al kadib. The one who tries to sell his item with a lying oath. By Allah, I'm selling you this fan and it's working hundred percent, and you know it's not working. That's why the one who sells his item with a lying oath, he is from the Yamin al Ghamus because it's in the past and it's a lie. And you are devouring, you are taking the right of the others because you're selling him something which is not worth it. So you're taking more money for something which is worth less. So Yamin al Ghamus, this person who is selling his an item with this oath and he's lying. قال, by lying oath. So this is dipping, causing, submerging oath, ramus, whatever you want to call it. So what about the person, the one who does make an oath while he's selling and buying, okay? But he is not lying. Is that okay? Listen to me. Oaths in selling and buying should not be there. It's disliked. That's the minimum of it. It's all right if it's been needed, if it's sometimes. Okay? But if you are all the time saying it, even if you are truthful, it's still haram and major sin. Yes, it is major sin. There's a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, and our Sheikh al makes it authentic. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, three people who will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, and exactly the same. And he will not look at them, and he will not speak to them, and he will not purify them, and they will have severe torment. Same thing, but he did not repeat that three times as in Hadith Abi Dhar. Zanin, first one, an old man who's still fornicating. Old man, I mean, he's above 60. His gray hair is showing. You know, his lust is not as the youth. The youth is understandable why they fornicate, but you, an old guy, still fornicating. So you're going to be. Allah will not look at you and not speak to you and you will not be purified and Allah will give you severe torment. And a person who is uh, a poor, got nothing, 
Yet he's arrogant. I mean, why do you are arrogant? You got nothing. I mean, we understand that the rich person could be arrogant when he's driving his car, when he's his house, but you got nothing. So, we, so that means just like the person who is an old man, a fornicator, it became from his soul. He's a fornicator. We call it his tabi'ah, his sajiyya is bad, is evil. He's been evil inside. The same thing here, this guy is evil. He, I mean, imagine that when he gets rich, he's already arrogant without being rich. Same thing with the old guy. Imagine that he is a young man. He's already a fornicator when he's old. Then the last one, which is the one that we want to bring it for, he said, قال, وَرَجُلٌ جَعْلَ بِضَاعَتَهُ لَا يَشْتَرِي إِلَّا بِيَمِينِهِ وَلَا يَبِيعُ إِلَّا بِيَمِينِهِ and a man he made his good, okay, is actually oath. He does not sell anything except with his oath. He does not buy anything except with his oath. He's included in the haram, major sin. So if you all the time, whenever you want to buy something and sell something, you made the oath of Allah, that's a major sin. But if you said it sometimes and you are truthful, it's okay. But li listen to me, you should not be involving Allah in buying and selling. See, why is it that the one who is making an oath every time, whenever he buys and sells, yet he's truthful, it is still a major sin? Because the oath in his heart of this person is not being as respectful and respected as the one who's, you know, fearing to make an oath, except if he needs to make an oath. This guy just, you know, by Allah, by Allah, by Allah, by Allah, this working, not working. Why should you do that? Use it whenever it's needed. طيب. Now we come into third one, اليمين المنعقدة. And this is the more, one which we're going to be elaborating a bit more. Now, an enacted oath and its ruling. Uh, by the way, making an oath as well on something that you have more certain of is no problem. So it is it is permissible. So if you are, for example, making an oath of something that you are most certainly it is. So I, I, I'm, I'm about 90% that I traveled to London yesterday, not 100%. Wallahi, I traveled to London yesterday, no problem. So if you are almost certain, you got ghalabat dhan, no problem. What is the proof for this? The man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Messenger, I've had it. What have you done? I approached my wife, marital relation, while I'm fasting. While I'm fasting, he just, you know, made the sexual intercourse. Oh, did you do it then? Okay. So he said to him, uh, free a slave. Messenger of Allah. You've got no slave. Okay. He said to him, feed, sorry, uh, fast 60 days continuously. Messenger of Allah, I couldn't hold myself for one month. How can I hold myself for 60 days? Okay, feed 60 poor people. He said, by Allah, between Labatayha, the two mountains of Medina, there is no one poorer than me. Prophet smiled. Now, this guy does not work with the socials in order to know that these guys are, you know, one of, the whole Medina is in, on the dollar or not, and which one is poorer than him. But he thinks that and believes more certainly that he is the poorest. The Prophet Allah said to him, well, how do you know that you are the poorest? There could be somebody else who's poorer than you are. So you have to expiate for your oath. So it's something on the past and it's truthful and it's ghalabatul dhan. You are more certain, no problem. You are allowed to do that. So you have certainty, almost certainty, uncertainty. Almost certainty, ghalabatul dhan, no problem to make an oath on that. Wallahu alam. Let's go to the last one, please. Again, title. An enacted oath and its ruling. In, what is it called? In act enacted. Enacted. Okay, munaqida. Enacted. Okay. An enacted oath refers to that oath which is intended, which was intended by the one who made it, and he is determined to fulfill it as a way of emphasizing that he is going to do or not do a specific act. If he fulfills his oath, there is nothing further upon him. However, if he breaks his oath, he must expiate it. As Allah has said with respect to oaths, He will call you to account for that which your hearts have earned. And He will punish you for your deliberate oaths. Oaths. 
I think you finish it, isn't it? Yeah. You go into that another title? Uh, yeah. So how can you just dump into the like title with that? <laughs> so when you stop a title, you should stop. Not to start that it's following one. Okay. Al-Yameen al munaqidah So this Yameen has three conditions. Just like we said to the submerging oath, Ramus got three conditions. Got three conditions. Condition number one, on future. So the other one was what? On past. Something that you enacted that means I'm going to do it in the future. That's number one. So it's in the future. Number two, uh, the uh, we call it the intention to do it. So it becomes been, becomes lagu from the first one. If you don't have the intention, by Allah, I'm going to break your legs, and you're not going to break your legs. So the intention, a niya. So the niya. So you have we call it qasdu aqdiya. You have you have the intention to do it. Third one, on something which is uh, can be can be done, ala mumkin, say can be done. Type. Now, what is the proof that it is to be on the future? That is because Prophet Sallallahu said there are five things. There is no kafara. One of them is the Yamin of Sabir, which is in the past. So that means this one is in the future. That's the proof. Now, when we say upon the future, so if it was on something on the past, then it is Ramus, and then, okay, there is no expiation for that. As we said, we said it has to have the intention. You have to have the intention behind this act of oath. So if the person is insane, or if the person, he is senile, then his oaths are not to be taken in place because regardless of how many oaths, he's insane or senile. Old man, he doesn't know what he's saying. Regardless of how many oaths he does, it is not going to take place. Also, the person who is drunk, he doesn't know what he's saying. So if he makes an oath, still this is going to take place. Also, the person who is in a state of drunkenness, like the one who is extremely angry, by Allah, and he's angry, he's not going to be taking place. Because he's just closed, his mind is closed. As for the child, if he's below the distinguishing age, then the oath will not take place. Even if he had to make a lot of oaths, no problem, because it's a child. But if he is above his distinguishing age, and I did not say puberty, I said distinguishing age, where he distinguishes between wrong and right. So, for example, if we accepted his prayer, and that's accepted when he's seven years old, his prayer is accepted. Okay, And even when he's 10, we, we, we start to discipline him. Why did you leave the prayer? So that as well, that type of person, that type of child, I should say, his oath will be taken in consideration if he had reached that age of distinguishing. So if he made an oath, he has to fulfill it. If he did not do it, then he will expiate it. The third condition we said is something which is possible to be done. Mumkin, possible to be done. When we say possible, that means if it is impossible, whether it is to do it or not to do it, it's basically the same. And I'll give you an example, inshallah. And whether it is impossible because of in itself impossible to do or impossible because habit, uh, normally it is not, it is, it's impossible to do. So let's say, for example, something which is, cannot be fulfilled as an oath, possible, uh, sorry, impossible in itself. Impossible in itself, for example, let's say, by Allah, I will kill the dead. Sorry, you kill the dead? The dead is already dead. How can you kill him? So that's impossible in itself, no way. So whether you said, by Allah, I will kill the dead, or by Allah, I will not kill the dead. This is to the other way around. Not to do it or to do it. Both are, to call it impossible, so it will not consider as an oath. Also, impossible, because normally it is the case, it's beyond our capability. For example, by Allah, I will fly. Uh, without tools, of course. By Allah, I fly with my own hands. That there is no oath in there. Because you're, you're, you're hallucinating. What are you talking about? 
So whether you say, by Allah, I will fly, or by Allah, I will not fly. Oh, brother, you're not a bird. You can't fly. Well, so you, you say to you, by Allah, so this oath will not take place. So again, the conditions are number one is to be on a future, something in the future. Number two has to be uh, 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 an intention behind it. It's not level, just you mean it. The heart is behind it. And thirdly is uh, the, that it has to be on something which is possible. Possible in itself and possible normally. Can be achieved by human being. Uh, now, this Yamin al Munaqidah, before I go to the following title, let me finish that and we'll, after we finish this, we will give you more notes, inshallah. Father. Oaths are determined by intention. Umar ibn al Khattab anhu, narrated that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Verily, all actions are based on intention. If someone swears by something, but inside he is concealing something different, then the determining factor is his intention and not his wording. Suwaid ibn Hanbala said, mm. This is as long as the wordings has a possibility for the intention. Okay. So he's saying basically here that the when I make an oath on something, it's on my intention, not on the intention of the person who's in front of me. But if the person in front of me is going to ask me to make an oath, that's different. We're going to talk about that. But I'm making an oath now. It is on my intention. Okay? So this wording has to accommodate for this intention. I cannot say a word which is far or fetched from the intention. No way. So, for example, I, I want to tell this person, okay, something which is uh, uh, um, ambiguous, it has double meaning, and I want him to misunderstand the meaning. So I said to him, he's asking me about such and such. He says, is Ahmed here? I said, Ahmed is not here. Okay, so when I said Ahmed is not here, that means Ahmed is not in my palm, right? He's not in my hand. But if, we, if we're going to make an oath now, by Allah, Ahmed is not here. How can it be possible Ahmed is going to be in my palm? That's incorrect. To say by Allah, because it's impossible Ahmed is going to be placed in your hand. So your wordings has to take accommodate for this intention of yours. So your intention is not here. Okay, by Allah, Ahmed is not here. That means he's not on Zoom. Okay, so it, it, it takes, yeah, it could be on, on Zoom, but not in your palm. Okay, or Ahmed, wallah, is not here. That means he's not in my thoughts. You could say for his Ahmad, maybe not, in my, not here, that means not under my caption, it's not under my grab. That's something else. But I'm just saying, you have to have something which is a word to accommodate for that intention. Because just by Allah, Ahmad is not in my cooking oil. This is, what is this cooking oil? It will never be in the cooking oil. Father, Suwaid ibn Hanbala. Suwaid ibn Hanbala said, we went out intending to go to the Master of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With us was Wa'il ibn Hujr. Along the way, an enemy of his grabbed him. The people found it very difficult to make an oath stating that he was with them. Therefore, I swore that he was my brother and therefore he let him go. We came to the Messenger of Allah and I informed him that the people felt very uncomfortable about making this oath, but I swore that he was my brother. The, the Prophet wasallam then said, you have told the truth, a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. Thus, the intention of one making the oath is taken into consideration, unless he is asked to swear to something by, for example, a judge in a court of law. If he is asked to swear to something, then it is the intention of the one doing the requesting that is the overriding factor. Abu Hurairah uh, reported that the Messenger of Allah said, 
The oath is according to the intention of the one who requested it. He also narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, Your oath is on what your companion is telling you to affirm. Right. So if you are in a judge of a, uh, a court of a judge and the judge asks you to make an oath on something, it has to be on the intention of the judge itself, not your intention. You can't use ambiguous word. Unless there is a necessity. Unless there's a necessity. And here, Suwaid ibn Muhammadullah gives us this necessity. Here, basically, the story where the enemies took one of them. So, story is he says, we, we wanted the Prophet وسلم, and we had Wa'ir ibn Hujur. So, he has been taken by an enemy. So, people were sort of uh, uh, hesitating to make an oath. So, I have made an oath that he is my brother to let him go. So they let him go. When the wicked came to the Prophet I told him that the people was embarrassed and was not really comfortable to make an oath. And I didn't make an oath. And I said, Allah is, is my brother. So he made an oath according to their intention. So he said, you're truthful because the Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He said, is my brother. I mean, he, meant, he made him to think blood brother, but he meant Muslim brother. So that's why we say in this hadith is very important hadith. It tells us as that in the case of there is a valim, an oppressor, and you want to do something, and he asks you, okay, uh, where is your, what is that person? And you are hiding him. Say by Allah, he is not in your house. You say by Allah, he is not in the house. And you meant different house. No problem. It's darura. Necessity. Type. Um, this enacted oath has cases. Let's just talk about these cases one by one and also make the hukum, the rule regarding it. Case number one is that you made an active oath to make something or to do something which is compulsory upon you or to abandon a sin, haram. So you said, by Allah, I am going to pray the dhuhr. Of course, the Lord of is already obligatory upon you. By Allah, I'm going to not fornicate. So, fornication is haram anyway. But you made an oath. In this, in this type of oath, you must fulfill it. There's no option for you. You must not, you must fulfill it. It means you must fulfill the obligatory by praying and you must fulfill the uh, abandoning the prohibition, which is not to fornicate. You must fulfill it. You have to. Okay. Second one, the opposite. By Allah, I'm going to fornicate, and by Allah, I'm not going to pray. In this case, you must violate the oath. You cannot fulfill it. You have to pray, and you have... You should not fornicate. So when you say, by Allah, I'm going to fornicate, and by Allah, I'm not going to pray. This is the opposite. We, you must violate. Hint. You have to. And also in this case, do I have an expiation? Of course. There's a difference among the scholars, the correct opinion. You have to expiate. Even though you must violate, but you have to expiate. The expiation. Third one. You made an oath to do something which is has precedence to do or to leave something which leaving it is takes precedence as well okay so by Allah I'm going to put the thobe instead of the trousers the trousers are baggy but still halal but so by Allah I'm going to put the thobe instead of the trousers and by Allah I'm going to abandon the trousers and put the thobe the opposite that we say it is recommended for you to fulfill your oath because both of them is halal the trousers as long as they're baggy no problem so here we say it is recommended to fulfill the oath because you're doing something good and it is disliked to violate the oath but it's not haram and if you do if you do, of course again if you have violated the oath you have to pay the um, you have to make the expiation the fourth thing, which is the opposite. By Allah, I'm going to put the trousers on and not put the thobe on. And by Allah, I'm going to abandon the thobe and put the trousers. 
We say that in this case, it is recommended to violate, okay? And it is this light to fulfill. And again, if you did not fulfill, if you fulfill this, not haram, but if you did not fulfill, when you violate it, you have to make an expiation. Fifth case is that when things are equal, Whatever you do, you don't do. By Allah, I'm going to Birmingham. Whether you go to Birmingham or not, you go to Birmingham, there's not going to make a difference. Okay, so we say uh, priority goes to fulfill the oath because you have said Allah's name. Okay, it's better than violation. Fadal, last thing. Forgetting or doing something by mistake does not break one's oath. If a person makes an oath not to do something and then out of forgetfulness or mistakenly he does that act, then in such case he has not broken his oath. In the Quran, Allah stated the following supplication, Rabbana la tu'akhidna im nasina aw akhfa'na. Our Lord, punish us not if we forget or fall into error. A hadith states that Allah, the exalted, the almighty, has answered positively to this supplication. Nah. Allah said, nah, yes. And also we could add, you've been compelled. So if you made, been compelled, forced to make an oath under the gun, threat, that oath as well, if you violated it, there is no violation. So there is no expiation. So if you did it, if you forgot to do it, if you made it by mistake, by Allah, I'm not going to drink water. And if suddenly you drank water without you realizing you did not violate the oath. You did not violate the oath. Same thing if you've been forced you did, and you did it, you did not violate the oath. Type. We we'll stop here, inshallah, and last class will be, inshallah, for oaths, because we haven't talked yet about the kafar, the expiation, how much is it and how to do it, which is better. Can we do it before or after? That, inshallah, will be left for the third part for this. And then after that, the vows. We'll take the questions, inshallah. And what time is the Maghrib today? Here it's in four minutes, Sheikh where I am. No, that's in London. It's like about maybe seven, eight minutes. Fadal. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Brothers and sisters, raise your hands to ask your question. And if you're from Aylesbury, put that in your name so you can have the priority. And uh, if there's a sister who wants to type their question, you can send it on the chat now to questions admin one, and I'll read it to the Sheikh, inshallah. Make sure you have Aylesbury in your name, please. Obeid, go ahead. You're first. Um... Yes, uh, it's about the, if you like, for instance, you're selling things or you, you're going to sell something and then you lied in it, but you didn't mention Allah's name. How, where does that come? Is that just a sin or is that? It's a sin. A person who does not make an oath and he lies is a liar. Lie, but he's not a major sin, but he will become major sin. Okay. Uh, uh, it will become major sin if you lie to, you know, without an oath, but you lie to take the due right. Without the oath, you lied to, to make more money. Do you understand me? Well, without making yeah. the oath, you lied. You're a liar. And if you keep lying, you're becoming a liar with Allah. And that's a major sin. So small sins will gradually go to a bigger sin. And also remember, the believer should not be a liar. The believer should not be a liar. But it's not the ghamus. The ghamus is different. Shahada to zur. Some people will say, it doesn't matter. They are disbelievers. Let's lie on them. No, it's not correct. <laughs> Now, please go ahead, Faisal. If now, someone has, by the way, there's nobody there in from Aylesbury. If someone has evil thoughts, like for example, he thinks about drinking, drinking Hummer or committing fornication, but he does not follow through, will he still be held accountable for having those thoughts or feelings? He's having feelings, he's harboring feelings, but he does not produce them in the outside world. In, in actions, correct, Sheikh, yes. No words, no act, nothing, but it's not, it's not good to harbor something like this. But if he does not implement them, he's called Westwards, I think, this guy. Okay, so, but it will not be recorded against him. That's no. the question. No. Just and Sheikh, and, and the Qareen will not be able to read them as well. I had a question regarding the Qareen. And the Qareen will not be able to read them. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Please go ahead, Nakhla. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. You call, he's calling you palm tree. I don't know. Exactly. I know. He gave me the name, mashallah. He, he wrote the name. He wrote the name, Nakhla. 
Yeah, no. but he's, he's got Bilal before it and Abu Umar. And why you chose just An Nakhla, the last one? <laughs> I like Allah it. Akbar. I like it. Allah Akbar. <laughs> An Nakhla, it's not my name I'm giving to you. It's the policeman who was in Saudi Arabia in Hajj. <laughs> he had seen you like a palm. He said, The palm tree. Can I take a picture? Allah Akbar. You remember that? Fadal. Ma'am, I this one. So, is it an oath when you say about something in the future, uh, when you say bi'idnillah or insha'Allah? No. There's no oath. That's not okay. at all. Now, nah. say no. as much as you want. Bismillah, mashallah. And if he had made an oath and he said Bismillah, so the insha'Allah, it does not become an oath. Okay. Nah. Allah. Yes. from Muhammad from Ellsbury. Please ask your question, bro. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. I just want to clarify. You mentioned a person who's selling something, and he's taken an oath and he's lying to take the rights of people. That's ramus, and you said it's past tense. How how is that past tense? I just want to clarify that. Because you say, by Allah, this is working. So it's like past. Because it's working all the time from the beginning. Okay, I see. Okay. See what I mean? It's, it's, it's something yeah, yeah. which is like it's working because it's been working before. It's not working okay. now. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, Jazakallah. Yeah, Jazak. Well, khairan. Hamza Tubn Muhammad. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. So basically, on Tuesday, I made an oath. Uh, it was basically something that usually happens on Tuesday and Friday. So I said, Wallahi, it's going to happen. But then it turns out it didn't happen. So if you made an oath on something which you had most certainty and did not take place, as I said, it is not a violation of the oath. You thought okay. most likely it will happen and you said, Ba'ala will happen and it did not take place. Don't worry about that. Exactly. Anas, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Sheikh, I personally try to avoid swearing by Allah in case of fear of falling into sin, obviously, if I do break the oath. But is there any situations that it is actually recommended to swear by Allah? There is a situation where, make it, uh, when there's something to do with the deen and you want the people to be paying more attention, like the Prophet, وسلم, he is a prophet and he is the most believed one and the companions believe anything even the kuffar used to believe him if he said anything before he had said what he had said regarding the deen he used to believe in anything because he said to them if i tell you there's an army behind this mountain about to attack you would you believe me they said we believe you more than that we always believe you we always try to appoint you to be the truthful person he said okay I'm, I'm giving you a warning from allah said, then no we don't want to believe you so the prophet of allah he doesn't need to make an oath yet he made an oath a number of times by the one in whose hand is my soul, if you do such and such and By the one in whose hand is my soul, if Fatima is to steal, I will cut off her hand. This is to do with the deen. So the emphasis that is very important for me that I am going to implement prescribed punishment even on my daughter. He could have no. just said, if, I, if my, my daughter will, will steal, I will cut off her hand. But he said, by Allah, nobody asked him to make an oath. Emphasize something for the deen. My law and Musa, and when he saw the Bible, the old Torah, sorry, not Torah, the Bible, the Old Testament with the hand of Umar Khattab, he was, you know, red in his face, the Prophet of Allah. He said, What is this? From the scripture of the Jews, he said, By Allah, if Musa is to be alive, he will do nothing except to follow me. He will not read his Torah, his own Torah. He will follow me. So why, why, what do you want to do with this? Busy yourself with the Quran. So he doesn't need to say that, but it's his emphasis to, to show the importance. It's to do with the deen. Naam. No. Jazakallah no. khair. Jazak. Jazak. Ahmed, ask your question, please. Hello? Naam. Yeah, yes, yeah, Sheikh. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Um, I got a, a couple quick things. Uh, firstly, um, one <laughs> yeah they're very very quick yeah the, the Aisha time here in the UK in the summer obviously you have a calendar that says like 11 15 ish and and that's the late one and then you got the typical London Central and East London mosque that say 10 36 I believe at the moment so um I mean considering that I I mean I personally don't work at the moment and I stay up till Fajr I go to sleep after Fajr so would I have to wait until to pray Aisha at the 11.15 time or can I? I advise you to stay until as late as possible but don't delay it before, after midnight. So midnight, is at, midnight is at the moment if you just calculate between 
three ish, three o'clock and eleven. That's four hours. So uh four So hours. I shouldn't pray. I shouldn't uh, pray. Let I me should. just calculate please. Your 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 midnight now is almost one o'clock. Uh, so if before so if you pray twelve o'clock, half past eleven. If you pray half past eleven, you'll be okay. Sure. You're in London? Yeah, but I'm just wondering if if we're allowed to follow the ten thirty six then time for Aisha. Ten thirty six. I'm not really sure, but uh, you see, uh, how far are you from Luton? Because in Luton at the moment we're making it about eleven. So I don't know. Uh, it's it's just very tight here. Okay, and I, just, ha, and, yeah, yeah. I would say make it later. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, just quickly, are we allowed to keep uh, money in in banks as long as we're not taking interest? Because considering Islamic banks are controversial. Well, keep it an Islamic bank, which is controversial, than a non-Muslim bank. <laughs> so if you so, have facilities so. in Islamic bank, and tell me about it, because I want to do the same thing as well. Um, our Sheikh al used to say to us, um, yeah. much as you can, take the money out of the bank. But we live in a time where we cannot implement that. If we do this, it's not about the thieves. It's about that... Yani, it's going to be question mark. Yeah, and we're well, living, have, yeah. in, living in yeah. a world these days. They want to know every single penny goes in your pocket. And exactly. every single penny goes out of your pocket. Where is it gone? What did yeah, you I mean, if, if an employer pays you to, for your job, you always obviously they ask your bank details. So does it yes. fall under necessity? Because, he, he, because he's, he's not really responsible. You see, in our countries, a long time ago, yeah, you could bring a lump sum of money and put it in the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, when I went to the banks in, in our country, <laughs> I was talking to the manager of the bank, who is a student of mine, as an age-wise, but he's not a student in religion. But he, he, he when I, he's an Islamic bank, it was. And he, when he saw me, he put me in the office upstairs with him. And, and then he said to me, now, yeah, Sheikh, now if, we, if you want to put 5,000 pounds, one go in the bank, we have to pay, to pay to to put it twice, not once, one only. Because if you put it once, one go, they will be raising a flag. Yeah. Where did you get it from? Because the the central bank, which is controlled by the monopoly of the World Bank, if you know, they want to control. So that's the whole thing. So the fact of Sheikh Al Albani maybe at that time is not suitable at this time. You should say she says to us, Sheikh. If you have your money which has been transferred by work to your bank account, following day, take it out. I was fast as you can. And I remember a person, wallah, he used to take his money uh, by you know, asking, when are you going to transfer it? So he's waiting for the moment. Then he puts his card in the machine to take it straight away. He doesn't want the bank to benefit because he's implementing the sheikh's fatwa. This is to do with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's just go to another person, please. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Ra. Abu Nasir al-Din, ask your question, please, Baba. Uh, Sheikh, uh, can you quickly clarify, like, um, how to write a will and, like, what you should include in it? That's a lecture. <laughs> Is it a lecture? a lecture? Oh, okay. Clarify okay. to make a will. It's a lecture. Like, it's not a question. Um, there is on the internet, this how to write a will and all of this. I have actually done something. Did I pass it to you, Ahmad, yet? No. Yes, Sheikh, yeah. Did I? Yeah. And I told you to what? To look at it. Look at it. And have you looked at it? Yeah. And and you edit. Say, because, because the English language was not really that good. Yeah, yeah. It needs some editing. You do some editing, inshallah. When it's finished, it's, you put it for the students to benefit from it. Okay? Okay. Subhanakallah. Bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta.